of the Becoming Love radio broadcast with Dr. Diana Houston. The Becoming Love radio broadcast is right here on AM 900, FM 100.7, WKXV, every Sunday at 7.45 a.m. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me this beautiful Sunday morning on Becoming Love. As I read the pages from my journal, Serenity, written in the autumn of 2018, it's my prayer that you be open-minded and that my journal entry will encourage you to a deeper relationship with our beloved Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ, who is our High Priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. As explained in Hebrew chapter 7, we are His bride, and being brought up as a royal priesthood, and holy nation in him, along with Israel, 1 Peter 2, 9. Jesus is the Word made flesh, John 1, 1, and we are to follow his example to becoming the Word while following after him, as he said in James 1, 22, be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only. We are to learn to behave like Jesus and do the works that he did, in John 14, 12 through 15, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But this requires obedience, for he said in verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Being one body in Christ, he the head and we the body, though we are all individual personalities also, we are to put on the mind of Christ and to be in agreement and in one accord with Jesus. Each individual being obedient to doing his holy will, for their own life. We are a great and mighty army, and we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us, and he is our commander-in-chief, and the weapon of our warfare is love, for we need no other. He calls us his beloved, his bride, his children, trees of righteousness, the sheep of his pasture. Do you hear his voice? As he said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. How can we ever love him enough or thank him enough? It is impossible to ever repay him, and all he wants in return from us is to be loved for who he is, not just what he gives. So I will begin today with the first pages of my journal called, I Will Follow. I will follow you, Lord, wherever you lead. I will follow you wholeheartedly with glad anticipation in each step. I don't know what lies ahead, but you know, and that's enough. I walk by faith and not by sight, subordinating this visible world to the invisible spirit and shepherd of my soul. I will follow like hinds feet on high places, as it says in 2 Samuel 22:34. up to the heights where the view becomes more spectacular as I climb and I sense more keenly my separation from the world and all its problems. I am ever more free to experience fully the joyous reality of your presence, Lord. I give myself, my all, into your keeping. These glory moments lift me up awash in the dazzling light of you. You are a blinding splendor, magnificent in majesty and glory, holiness and brilliance. Hallelujah. My soul is humbled that you would share with me all that you are, all the love I can hold. Increase my capacity, enlarge my borders, draw everyone I meet to you, to your light, your love, 
your grace. I adore you profoundly. Let your light shine forth from me, that I may continue to shine like Moses, that your holiness and glory can be seen in me, so that others will see and want this light too. Want what I have for themselves too. And see not me so much, but see the invisible one, even Jesus, who lives within me. For it is not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. I am dead to this world. I am a citizen of heaven. This world is not my home. My home is there in your kingdom. I am an immortal soul because I believe your word. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 11, 26. I'm not anxious to leave here until all my loved ones are saved and I've done all I can to advance your kingdom. That's all that matters to me. Everything else is vain. Only the good that I can do for others and the souls I can rescue that are perishing matters to me. What matters to me is what advances your kingdom. All that I am and have belong to you alone. I listen intently for your voice and lead and guidance. The awesomeness of you has overcome me as I abide in your light. May it penetrate deep into the recesses of my heart and soul. As I sit quietly in your presence, burn away with spiritual consuming fire all regret, fear, resentment, and any other negative emotion you see there. I forgive anyone and everyone who has ever offended me in any way. Great peace have they which love my law, and nothing shall offend them, you said in Psalm 119, 165. Give me this understanding, this perfect peace. Cleanse my heart and make me pure, that I may see you clearly. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, you said in Matthew 5, 8. Free me from any fear that is hiding deep inside me that I don't see, or any anxiety. All that I fear is you, and your perfect love in me has cast out my fear and given me boldness and courage to talk with you and walk with you in your presence daily, knowing you see and hear me in all I say and do. You know my thoughts. Your knowledge of me is deeper than I can comprehend. You know my motives, my intentions, the reasons why I do what I do is what you judge. Let me see them clearly too that I may be honest in everything in my life and never rationalize away when I am wrong or make excuses to myself. But to admit openly to you these things you show me so I can grow in love and virtue as I go from day to day, year to year, until I cross over and enter into eternal bliss. Until then, I will trust you in all things in this flesh life. I am not afraid. I have upon me the whole armor of God. I thank you for loving the, the likes of me, such a one as I. Your love is enough. I rest myself in your grace and sovereignty. As you were searching my heart today, you reminded me to stop my complaining to people who would listen. I know you hate murmuring and complaining. I will do as you have asked me. I will stop it. I will bite my tongue. Then when I am alone with you again, I will bring my complaint to you alone. I want to please you. I don't want to voice my complaint to anyone. And I sometimes forget that you listen and hear every word I speak. And you know my every thought as it says in Amos 4.13. If I want understanding or acknowledgement that my complaint is legitimate or I need sympathy, I will bring it to you 
as you have told me to do this day. I know I can ventilate safely to you, and it goes no further, and does no harm to anyone. I have listened to you when you said complaining to others opens the door to deadly sins such as self-pity and pride and anger. No more grumbling or complaining when things don't go the way I expect or want. If I can't say something good, I will keep my mouth shut. My mother taught me that as a child. How quickly we forget. I trust you to let things happen as they will, without striving to predict the outcome or control the situation. I will abide in your presence and refresh myself throughout the day in moments of intimate worship to you. May I ever be increasingly aware of your radiant presence. I will take one day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute at a time. I want to please you and live fully in the present, depending on you each moment, rather than fearing my inadequacy. I will rejoice in your ability to make all things come out for my good regardless i rejoice in your abundant supply help me to train my heart and mind to seek your help continually even if i feel competent to do it by myself i will not divide my time and my life into things i can do by myself and things that require your help i need your help constantly in every situation I will rely on you to help me face each day and each situation confidently. I will walk in your spirit, in your light, in your truth, in your way. My path is lit up by your word. It is a lamp to my feet. This is the way I hear you say, walking in it. In Isaiah 119, 105, and Isaiah 30. 21. I will give you glory and praise in all circumstances with a grateful heart. I submit all my ways to your word that I may always be in your favor, abundantly blessed, highly favored, as a lover of my soul, a flame of love, a vehement consuming fire of love within me. <laughs> This is the end of the journal reading. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for all those who seek to draw near to you in heart and mind, in soul and body, in spirit and truth. Give them the desire of their hearts to love you above all and put you first in everything said and done. Raise up intercessors and witnesses. Make us consciously aware of your presence everywhere we go and in everything we say and do, that we may be brave soldiers and obedient servants to you, our sovereign King and our precious Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Until then. Yes, sir.